Hey, Dad, what's the first line to Octopus's Garden? Isn't it something like, Hey, little octopus, deep in the ocean, you have a pretty garden, can I borrow some lotion? <laughs> something like that? Well, that's close enough. I think that's how they sang it in Beatlemania. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. It's all part of my ongoing curiosity and fascination with marine life and oceanography. <laughs> Well, what brought up your sudden interest in that subject, dear? Have you been spending time in the library? No, of course not, Ma. Come on. <laughs> it's just that they've been rerunning Sea Hunt on cable recently. I always thought Sea Hunt was a show for morons. <laughs> well, today's the big day. I finally have enough money to buy a Mr. Underwater watch. Why do you want one of those? You can barely swim. And you're afraid of the water. Don't you people understand? The ocean is a state of mind. One doesn't have to be in it to appreciate it. From the time we first crawled out of the blue salt water as monkeys to the time we harnessed its power on surfboards, man has always strived to become one with the ocean. <laughs> Besides, I just think it would be kind of neat to have a watch I can wear into the shower. <laughs> I better get going. The transistor hut opens at 10, and after my experience with the Menudo tickets last week, <laughs> I know how things sell out early. <laughs> Bye. Can we try and start sleeping in in the morning so we miss him all together? Stand in the place where you live Now there's no Think about direction, wonder why you have it now Stand in the place where you were Now face well Think about the place where you Wonder why you haven't people stand in the place where you live now face no think about direction wonder why you haven't now stand in the place where you were now face well think about the place where you live wonder why you haven't people stand in the place where you are so stand please sir why can't I exchange a for one that works. Look, kid, I can't exchange any item that was obviously abused by the customer. But I just gave it to my mom this morning for her birthday, and it broke when she tried to wind it. Here's my receipt. Look, honey, I don't care if you wave the Magna Carta in my face. <laughs> I have a policy against loitering. <laughs> Tell your old lady I said happy birthday. Um, excuse me, sir. Could you tell me why that little girl just left your store in tears? Oh, she just remembered that her uh, dog had to have an operation. Is he going to be okay? <laughs> it's probably just a minor tonsillectomy. That's a relief. <laughs> what can we do for you today? Well, uh, according to your ad here, you have a Mr. Underwater watch for sale, and I would very much like to purchase that watch. Now... Before you give me one of your little tap dance bait and switch speeches, let me just tell you right now that I want this watch and this watch only. My mind is made up. This is the watch I want. I won't take any substitutes. That's it. Take it or leave it. Love me or leave me. That's it for Pit. Bye bye, Miss American Pie. Fine, I'll sell you the watch. It's a piece of junk. Really? Well, what else do you have? <laughs> I have just the watch for you. By the way, the name's Vic. I own this place. Oh, hello, Vic. I'm Chris Peterson. <laughs> And I'd just like to say that it's a relief that you're waiting on me instead of some slick sales clerk who might rip me off. <laughs> I'm sorry, is there a problem, sir? No, it's just a little congestion. <laughs> Chris? Yeah. Can I call you Chris? Please. I'm about to show you something very special. You know why? Because I can tell by your face that you're the kind of guy that appreciates quality. Now, what I'm about to show you, Chris, might overwhelm you at first, but I want you to keep in mind you're seeing the finest timepiece made in the world. Chronosync. Wow, a chron a, a chronosync. Yeah, it's not just a chronosync. That's a chronosync two thousand. That is the Cadillac of underwater watches. Hmm. Go ahead, try it on. Boy, oh, oh, oh! It's so gay and colorful looking. <laughs> but is it rugged? Yeah, sure. It's uh, gay and rugged. In fact, that is the slogan that they're going to use in their advertising. I I'm sorry, can I get you a lozenge or something? No, I'm fine. Now it stopped ticking. Now is that a bad sign? 
It's known as a tap watch. You just tap it now and then to get it started, and that keeps it from burning itself out by running constantly. <laughs> What a novel idea. <laughs> Boy. Well, now my major consideration. El Price or Rooney. I don't know that I can afford a Kronos sink. Not gonna lie to you, Chris. Like I told you before, this watch ain't a toy. It's a Cadillac. Mm -hmm. What'd I just say, Chris? This watch ain't a toy. It's a Cadillac. That's right. <laughs> you know who wears a watch like that? Neil Armstrong. You know who else wears a watch like that? Is the guy on the news that uh, got beat up that time. What's his name? Uh, Rather. Rather. Dan Rather. <laughs> he wears a watch like that. Pretty good company. Yes. Chris, the bottom line is it's 100 bucks. Uh, Now, that's 50 bucks more than the piece of junk you wanted originally, but we got a saying around here. You want a piece of junk, you go to a junkyard. You know, that's really quite beautiful. <laughs> hmm, I'm really not sure I want to rush into something, though. Did I, I also mention that that is the last one? I've got another customer coming in in a little while to see it. Okay, it's sold. Great. The total is 118. Okay. <laughs> And there's 118 on the nose. Oh, great. Well, that's interesting. I didn't realize sales tax was 18%. Well, why do you think the governor lives in a mansion? <laughs> No, I don't think that was him this time. I think that was the air conditioning. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Ma, Dad, you're early. You weren't supposed to get here till three. It's after three. Oh, yeah. My watch was resting again. <laughs> Isn't that neat, Dad? A watch that periodically shuts itself down so it won't overheat. Oh, look out. That may be giving off radiation. Honey, <laughs> are you sure they didn't sell you a bad watch? Ma, please, this is a chronosync. It's the Cadillac of watches. You sure it's not the Dodge Dart of watches? <laughs> Very funny. Now, if we're all done with our little witty jabs, let us now get on with the business at hand, christening my new Mr. Underwater watch. Let it now be written that on this day, at 3.05 p.m., It's 3.15. At 3.15 p.m., Chris Peterson entered his shower for the first time wearing a water-resistant timepiece strapped to his wrist. For time has always been of great importance to man, going back to the fabled sundial when man first oh, thought that perhaps he should... get on with it, should... Chris. I'm missing Wheel of Fortune for this. <laughs> okay, okay. Mom, Dad, here I go. This is more exciting than when we drove out to Snake River Canyon for that evil Knievel thing. Look, look, it's ruined. It's ruined. It's starting to dissolve like a sliver of soap. But that's impossible. This is a chronosink, gay yet rugged, water resistant up to a thousand feet, and it cost. It cost. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I don't want to shock you with horrifying news, but your little Chrissy's just been ripped off. Yeah, I think that just came in over the news service. <laughs> well, no one takes advantage of yours truly and gets away with it. I'm going back to that den of thieves, and I'm getting every cent of my money back. Probably. <laughs> Can I have a little privacy, please? Jeez. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, you thieving pirates. Drop your clocks and grab your socks, because I'm back to settle a score. You want to shut the door, guy? You're letting out all the heat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I want to talk to Vic, and I want to talk to Vic now. He ain't here. Okay, fine. Since your huckster boss isn't around, perhaps you'd like to explain this to me. Hmm? Explain to me why this, the Cadillac of underwater watches, was ruined by a simple three-second escapade in my shower. <laughs> Look, here's my receipt. I want my money back now. Hop to it. Kid, the Pope will open his own car wash before I give you your money back. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do just so there's no hard feelings. I'm going to give you this light-up duck cap for free. <laughs> As Humphrey Bogart said in The African Queen, 
You can't buy my silence with a stinking light-up duck hat. I want my money back, and I want it back now. Forget it. Okay, fine. I wasn't going to do this, but you've left me no choice. At this point, I shall drop my pants in protest of the shoddy business practices of this store, and I shall not repent myself until all my money has been cheerfully refunded. Hey, 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 put your pants back on. This ain't New Orleans. I'm sorry, I'll get used to it. This is called making a scene. I want my money back. I hate this store. I hate this store. I want my money back. Knock it off, you creep. I hate this store. I hate What the hell's going on here? Uh, officer, arrest this lunatic. He's a disgrace to the profession of retail electronics. All right, pal, let's go. Hey, wait a second. You can't arrest me. I'm staging a protest here like Gandhi used to do. Gandhi kept his pants on. <laughs> Actually, he wore a dhoti, which is the traditional Indian garb, and he often wore that. Once again, why are we dancing around in an electronic store in your underwear? Listen, Officer Smartass, I don't drop my pants at the drop of a hat. I have to be pushed pretty far before I make a profound statement like that. Look, sweetheart, you want to take a couple of deep breaths and then slowly explain to us just what the hell you're talking about? You want a drink or something? Oh, yes, that would be lovely. You're a dear. I would like uh, a little iced cappuccino and uh, maybe a peach danish and uh, perhaps a little pepito sauce just on the side would be lovely. <laughs> Get the jerk a cup of water. Okay, here's the story in a clamshell. Boy saves up for underwater watch. Boy buys underwater watch. Boy takes underwater watch into the shower. Boy screams like a girl when the watch is ruined. Boy starting to get on detective's nerves. Please. <clears throat> Store refuses to refund boy's money. Boy takes off his pants. Boy's arrested by goon squad. The end, sleep tight, pleasant dreams. <laughs> Mr. Peterson, can we be uh, perfectly blunt with you? Oh, please. Blunt away. This time when you dropped your pants and Mr. Peterson has been under surveillance for some time now. We know they've been selling counterfeit merchandise. Everything from chronosync watches to Maine lobsters. Counterfeit seafood? Why, those unscrupulous bastards. <laughs> the store itself is small potatoes. What we're really after is their supplier. The big potato. <laughs> Unfortunately, he rarely shows his face unless he's making a big delivery. Now, if we had the proper bait, I think we could catch him. But so far, he's managed to elude us. That's a bummer. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? He's perfect. No one would ever suspect someone as goofy looking as him. No, we can't. It's too dangerous. The kid could get killed. Oh, sure. I mean, there's an outside chance, but I don't think the world would stop spinning. But the outside uh, chance hello, is Hello, excuse much. me. I'm still here, you know. Jeez. Mr. Peterson, how'd you like to be part of an undercover sting operation? Are you kidding? Yeah, sure. Great. I'll do anything to catch those scoundrels that took me for a ride. I'm in, boys. Consider me your bait. I'm like a piece of cheese waiting in the trap for Monsieur Mouse to come and partake of my rich, smoky flavor. We're looking at a dead man. Hello, Transistor Hut. Vic. Hi, Chris Peterson. Where were you this afternoon? Oh, so you heard about my little indiscretion today, huh? Sorry about that, Vic. Two words, sugar rush. Yeah, I just had two candies and a... A chocolate-covered peanut. <laughs> yeah, Vic, I'm really sorry. I love the watch. In fact, it's working perfectly now. And you know what? I've decided to buy 3,000 more for all my newspaper boys. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to have to insist on delivery to my home because <coughs> right now <coughs> I'm nursing the grip. <coughs> and I can't go outside. <coughs> oh, you'd have to go through your supplier for an order that large. Hmm. <laughs> well, bring him along. Yeah, great. The more the merrier. <laughs> okay, I love you. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, we're all set. Now, Mr. Peterson, listen very carefully. The wiring we've done up here in your little treehouse is very precise and very delicate. That's the camera right over there. Now, whatever you do, don't touch or move anything. You got that? 
Well, what if I have to go to the bathroom? I wasn't talking about the bathroom. That's a relief, because I have a bladder like a hamster. <laughs> okay, guys, let's move out. Good luck, Mr. Peterson. Thank you. Remember, this is a very dangerous operation. The last thing we need is another dead civilian in our hands. Yeah, yeah. So, do I have time to run to the 7-Eleven for a peppermint patty? No. <laughs> Just stay put and get ready. Jeez, he's like a little snapping turtle. <laughs> oh, great, the professionals. <laughs> There's a little thing called electrical fires, boys. I guess they didn't teach you about that one. Stupid black-footed fuzz pigs with their fat, ugly wives that they try to make love to unsuccessfully every night after they come home from an evening with their prostitute girlfriends and a day of collecting graft and beating up old lady jaywalkers. Just... Mr. Peterson. Yes. We can hear everything you're saying. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Well, I was just reading from today's Family Circus comic out loud. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, this is it. This is it. Let's get it on. Hi, guys. Welcome to my sting. I mean, my stink. I mean, I mean my, my stinking room. Vic, we're getting to be old chums, aren't we? Let's not push it. There's your pants. Oh. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> Who's your little friend, Vic? Uh, this is, uh, Tom. How you doing? Well, how you doing, Tom? <laughs> Tom, as in, uh, as in Tommy. Uh, as in the pinball wizard. <laughs> hey, God, I got the money or not? I'm a busy man. Yeah, I got the money. You got the watches? I got the watches. But first, I got to see the cash. Oh, I see. So it's one of those, I'll show you mine if you show me yours first things, huh? <laughs> Would you cut the crap? Can we get some business here or not? Okay, all right, I'm cool. I'm cool, I'm cooled with it, Daddy-o. Okay, everyone's cool. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. Give him the money, you moron. Don't call me a moron. What's up with this guy? He's starting to make me nervous. Hey, he's not some kind of psycho, is he? <laughs> What's in your ear there, cowboy? Oh, uh, <laughs> I see you've noticed my, uh, hearing aid slash uh, radio slash uh, sports announcing thing slash. Uh-oh. Oh, Cassius Clay's out. Oh, he's been KO'd by Arnold Palmer in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Dumbass. Get away from there. Oh, okay. <laughs> As Sir Monty Hall used to say, let us now make a deal, squires. <laughs> Look what I made, some fudge. Oh, hi, Ma, great fudge. <laughs> Who wants fudge? <laughs> Strangle him? Aren't you uh, going to introduce us to your sleazy-looking friends? <laughs> sure, Dad. Uh, this is Tom and Vic. We're doing a little business together. How cute. Are you two paper boys? No, ma'am. <laughs> That's one hell of a leather jacket. You may think it's classy, but it makes you look cheap, boy. <laughs> Get them the hell out of there, now! Oh, okay. Well, thank you for the fashion review, Dad. I've just been told it's time to get you the hell out of here now. So thank you for stopping by. <laughs> Off you go. Okay, watch the steps. See you at breakfast. Bye-bye. <sighs> look, kid, you got about 30 seconds to make this deal, or I'm out of here. Okay, okay. Let's do it. Come on over, Tom. Why don't you sit right there on the sofa, and Vic, you come on over here, and you have a seat right next to your buddy Tom, and make yourself comfortable, and just for me, Vic, why don't you just position your body that way, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, and Tom, you're right there, here we go, I've got the money. All right, now. Let's see, here's my money. <laughs> now let's look at all those watches, huh? <laughs> Wow, look at all these watches that I just paid for. <laughs> Ooh, you jerk, you're blocking the camera. What? Get your butt out of the camera, we missed oh. everything. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, oh, um. Hey, Tom, you know what would be a fun idea? Why don't I just give you this money back, and then you give me the watches back? <laughs> we can pretend it's kind of like an instant replay, like a little skit. <laughs> How is this? Whoa, 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 wait a minute here. What? 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 <laughs> okay, guys, 
Before you jump to conclusions, I have to wear a concealed police microphone for medical reasons. <laughs> Vic, check this out. I don't believe this. The dog, he set us up. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're in the clear here. He's got the cash. We're not holding anything. The merchandise is safe in here. They can't open it without a warrant. Man, you know the law, John, John. Hey, hey, I got a funny idea. Come on down here, Tom. Why don't you guys just take this money back just for the hell of it? Go ahead, take it back, and then I'll take this back. Come on, wouldn't that just simply be daffy if we did that? <laughs> Bye-bye, boys. <laughs> I didn't know those came in all those colors. <laughs> yes, scumbags, up against the wall. Let's go, move it. Move. Not you, Peterson, the other scumbags. <laughs> we didn't do anything. Oh, yeah? What are these? Party favors? And most importantly, we've got you for destroying a police camera. For that alone, you're looking at 60 years, pal. <laughs> well, actually, I think the good news is I think it's just scratch. I don't think it's really broken. Shut up. <laughs> okay, man, time to take out the garbage. Go Woo! Huh. Well, Mr. Scream in my ear all night. <laughs> it's a little touch and go there for a bit, but uh, thanks to my patented little trip trap here, we managed to capture a couple of bad apples tonight. And, well, even though my methods were a little unconventional and may have rattled you at times, I, I think you have to agree that in the end they were quite effective. But you know, I want to commend you on your professionalism because I, for one, feel safer at night knowing that men like you are out there to protect men like me. Ow! Later tonight, join host Joe Piscopo, the Boston Celtics, and America's Top Comics in Boston for Comic Strip Live Primetime. And this Thursday, Homer steals cable TV and gets more than he bargained for on an all-new Simpsons. Then, the babes get a special visit from Dolly Parton. Stay tuned now for Married with Children.